Okay, I'm going to give a small demonstration today in reference to NinjaTrader market, pro, market replay. Uh, the first thing I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you guys open a browser, and we're going to type in www.htech.net forward slash ntmr forward slash ntmr dot zip htech.net mtmr ntmr dot zip ntmarketreplay dot zip and then just hit enter that should bring you up and show you a file that you can download we're going to click save as it's going to open a browser window. Um, like this and allow you to save that file somewhere. What we want to do is somewhere E drive, another folder, whatever, right click, new folder, call it NTMR. I've already got it on here. I'll I'll call it MTMORR. I'm going to click enter again to go there and I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to bring that same folder back up and there's going to be a file in it. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. We're going to double click on that zip file that depending on depending on whether you have WinZip or WinRAR or 7-Zip or however you do it, it might be if you're using Windows to do it, you might have to open two Explorer windows. One, when you double click it, since it opens within the same window, you'll need another window to drag all this stuff out of. Um, www.7-Zip dot org another little tidbit for you this is a, a very nice free unarchiving type program Un unarchive zips uh, rars tars gz's hell it even does isos you can look inside of isos just 7zip.org download whichever version you got a 32 or 64 bit version um, great little free program I, I used to use winzip all the time now this is the only thing that I use. In any case, when I double clicked on it, it opened a window. I'm going to left click, hold, drag, left click, hold, drag, and highlight all my everything in the zip, and I'm going to drag it over to the folder. At this point in time, you're going to see. I'm just going to create another folder here and get rid of the zip file just so that it's not confusing. These four folder, these four files were in that zip. We're going to double click on the auto hotkey. We're going to say yes, run it. It's going to come up with an auto key installation. We're going to click next. We're going to click I agree. You're going to leave everything selected hey. here. Excuse gonna... me, Edge. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, a couple of us missed that web address. Can you can you post it up again or type it in the chat box? Here, I'll type it in the chat box. And that should work. We got to this far. We didn't do anything but hit next, 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 next. I'm going to hit next again. It's going to ask you for a location to install this. I personally didn't put this in my programs files. I changed this and got rid of all of this and put that directly into my C drive. C auto hotkey. And then I click install. Now, I've already got this installed, so I can't go any further with my portion of the demonstration. But I suggest that you just put it right in the root of C. And I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel here.
Okay, now let me bring up another window here. I'm going to go to my C drive, and I have Auto Hotkey installed. Now you're not going to see all of you're, you're probably not going to see all of this stuff that I've got in here because I've got a couple other programs and some other things. But in any case, in this Auto Hotkey folder, we're going to right click. We're going to say New Folder. And we're going to create a folder called NTMR. Click Enter. Click Enter again. you got a blank folder, NTMR, inside your Auto Hotkey folder. At this point, we're going to highlight the rest of the three files and drag those three files into that folder. So now we have Auto Hotkey installed, and we have the the instrument text, the NTMR, and an INI file for this. And I will leave this open. At this point, I'm going to open Ninja and going to the Control Center. Now what I want to show you here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, Connect, and I'm going to connect to my Market Replay connection. And mine comes up here like this. Now it will normally start on the first date that you have any data and will end on the last date that you have any data. Now, when you get into Market Replay, you can anywhere down here in the gray, you can right-click and you can click on Available Data. Now, that will bring up another form, and this will show you the data that you have currently stored for Market Replay. It will show you the instruments, the begin date, and the end date of both Level 1 and Level 2 data. Level 1 data will populate minute charts. Level 2 data will populate tick charts. Tick, range, Ranko, uh, line breaks, uh, anything that's based on a tick type data series, you're going to need level 2 data for it. So uh, before I use this auto op key and download any kind of data, I come back in and look and see what kind of data do I already have available. If we're working on the 6E, 613 contract, I already have data up through 427. So I need to start on 428 and go forward. I would need to do probably, well, uh, in CL, looks like I don't even have the last two contracts. 0613 and 07, haven't downloaded them yet. I've got up through here. So this is a good place you can go back, check what you have, and don't re-download something that you already have. The next step you're going to want to look at doing is double-clicking on the instrument text. Now, this is going to bring up a text file, and it's going to have a list of instruments in it. For this program to work correctly, this instrument list has to match exactly with the instrument list that you have in your NinjaTrader. So if we go back to the Control Center, Tools, Instrument Manager, this pulls up the instruments that I have in my Instrument Manager. Now I need to come and bring this back over here and see if these things match up exactly. So 6E3, Six. I've got CL two, three, four, five, six. I'm missing CL seven. I highlight CL six. Hit Control C. Come down here to the beginning. Hit Control V for paste. Change that to seven. Okay, and now I've got seven. DX three, DX six, ES three, ES six. 
uh, gold two, three, four, five, six, NQ three, six, a missing SI, so we'll highlight this one and we'll insert silver seven, Russell three and six, YM three and six, and then the bond, ZB, ZF, and ZN. This now matches my instrument list. You guys need to make sure that this matches your instrument list. I would suggest here at the bottom that you click backspace and that there are no spaces that your cursor ends at the end of the last instrument. No spaces. Type just like it is here. 6E space 03 dash 13 and so forth. When you're going back and downloading market replay data or you're using market replay, you don't want to download uh, January or February data for the 06 contract. It wasn't trading during that time. So if you're going to go back and download for, for indices or currencies or anything that works on a quarterly type contract, if you're going to download January, February, and March, you need to add the 03 contract to your instrument manager and add it to this list so that you can download the data to the appropriate contract. If I wanted to go all the way back to last year and download November, I would need to go back and down and add 6E, um, 6E, what, 1212 to make sure that I had the December contract. It gets a little more tricky when it comes to your your 30-day contracts like crude or gold or anything else that runs on a monthly contract. Um, you're, this, our 07, started, um, oh, what do I want to say, this month around the 18th. Downloading last month's data to CL07 isn't going to give you a true um, Well, well, the data is going to be different. You need to download the data for the contract time, the dates that the contract was trading for the exact contract itself. I hope that makes sense. I keep, uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at any type of uh, questions over here. Jerry, we're recording this. Um, Jen, the reason why I do that is so that I can go back and I can replay that data. If I don't have this instrument in my instrument manager, I can't go back and replay that data. So right now, being that we're still in May, June, um, I have deleted everything out of my market replay data that I had for last year, and I only have data that starts from 1-1-2013. And right now, I'll probably keep everything from the beginning of the year for the contracts that I would want to go back and look at. And then at the next contract, I might even go back and, and remove, um, you know, January, February, and March out of my market replay data. But this matches this exactly for me. So I'm just going to hit the X and I'm going to click Save. And then I can go ahead and cancel this. Now, I was just talking about market replay data. Market replay data is stored in your documents, NinjaTrader 7, DB, Data. All of these folders are your market replay data, and they are only market replay data. I could delete every one of these folders 
and it would not have an effect on Ninja whatsoever. This is stored by dates. You can see 2013, January of 01. 2013, January of 02. So your market replay currently in NinjaTrader 7 is stored by dates, individual days. Each one of these folders is an individual day with a date code. If I double click on that first one, I can see that for, well, that, that was a bad example. I'll go back and we'll do it for the 15th. I don't want to look at the first of the, of the year because most markets were closed. I can see that for January 15th of 2013, I have 6E, CL, DX, and GC. That's the only data I have available for that date. I have level 1 data and level 2 data. And you can go back to any folder and see if you, you know, what instruments you have. Now, I'll go back and say this again. Come September, it, when you start populating too much data into this folder, it can, I mean, you can really store gigs and gigs and gigs of information. You'll start seeing your market replay slowing down. You, you'll, you might even start seeing problems when you take the scroll bar and, and scroll it over. Well, that's because Ninja can't handle all the data that's there. I could come here to 01, and I could come all the way down through, let's just say the contract probably ended somewhere around, well, for this purpose, we're just going to say that we would take all of this data here. This is January's, day by day, February's, into March, through the end of March. And I could move this out to another directory. Now, only do this when NinjaTrader is closed. But I could cut all this, move it to a directory, move it to the cloud, move it to a storage server, you know, or delete it. If you'll never go back to it, it's fine to delete. I move all my stuff to a backup so that if I ever had a time that I wanted to come back and, and play with this data, that all I got to do is drag it back into this folder and it'll be there. I can drag this out the next time I start Ninja and start replay it would show that it was going to start at 4.1 because all of this data wouldn't be there. If I close Ninja and drug it all back in here it would restart back at 1.1 because the data was here. Ninja Trader 7 DB data. This is where all of your, your replay is, is done. I was talking with somebody the other day. I can't even remember what they were saying. Um, options, uh, tools, oh, historical data. And they brought that up and we're importing or exporting. This has nothing to do with replay data. Currently, the way Ninja is set up, replay data is completely separate and different than historical data. Um, okay, so I'm going to close that down. I'm going to come into my control center. I'm going to go file and I'm going to disconnect from market replay for the moment. I have a blank workspace up with no charts in it and I'm not connected to any data. That's where we want to be when we start this. Now, Ninja's default way to download Market Replay is to go File, Utilities, Download Replay Data. At this point, you can pick a contract that's in your list. You can pick a date, whatever date. You can select L1 data and L2 data. Remember, if you want tick style charts in market replay, you need to download L2 data. And then I can click OK and this would download 5.1 one
market replay for this instrument. And this is going to go away. It's going to download it. And I, now I've got to go back and download 5.2. And then I've got to go back and download and go through the same procedure. I'd click OK. This will download. It'll show the progress right here. Now we've got to go back. File, Utilities, Download. Now we've got to download 5.2 for the same instrument. And then you've got to download every day for every instrument you want. And it is just a super pain. And then you know what? So we're going to this, our C drive, and we're going to Auto Hotkey, and we're going back into the directory that we downloaded our Auto Hotkey in. Ninja Trader must be open, and no data connections. I also suggest that you do this in a blank workspace. At this point, all we're going to do is double click this NTR, uh, ntmr.ahk. If we double click it, you're going to get a little window that says beta, and then you should get And then you should get another form up here. In this form, and this is why that has to match, it's taking that instrument text and it's putting all of your instruments that you have in your instrument manager over here to the left. Now, I'm going to do this. I said that I had, I went and checked my market replay and I had up through 427 for DX06. I'm going to select DX06, and I'm going to go back to 427, which was this date, and I'm going to say I want April 29th date. I'll just do the 28th. Now, in this case, I could, this is my start date, I could very easily here on the end, I could come over here to, I'm going to download through May 4th. So this is just a week's worth of data. Now there's a couple things in here. We've got to click to show trade tips. Just, I'm not even going to explain it. Leave it checked. There is a wait period when, when whether you use this or whether you go through NinjaTrader's download process, it takes time for the data to download to your computer. And Ninja allows one connection at a time. So if you select it to download, let's say April 29th, and you're downloading it, you can't go back and download the 30th until the 29th is done. Some instruments, some dates take longer than the others. Uh, you know, Sundays, you're going to download in 10 or 15 seconds. Um, less liquid type instruments like EMD or even the dollar, they're not as liquid as the ES. They might take 30 seconds to download L1 and L2. Um, I find on average crude, if I set, if I set this delayed wait time to 45, that normally is plenty. Um, but that's the amount of seconds that you're going to have to wait between the download period. So for the purpose of this, is I'm going to say 30 seconds because I don't think DX is going to take so long and we'll watch it. We'll watch the timer and we'll see, we'll see how this proceeds. This is your delay time. If you're using ES, it's, it's, and I'll show you here, it'll be more self-explanatory. We'll click download. Now, you guys don't have to do this. While this is running, you cannot be playing on your machine. Auto Hotkey is a, is a program that takes over mouse control. You see really what this program did was it took my mouse, it clicked on file, it came down, clicked on utilities, clicked on that, set it actually did the whole process for me. You notice the timer there. I'm going to take my mouse off. 
down here it's telling us it's downloading level 1 data. It's downloading level 2 data. If this is still saying downloading, when this expires, you're going to get an error and it's not going to download that next day's data. So it's important that you try not to skimp on time. See, we had about eight seconds left before it was done, so we'll be okay. Now it's going to go grab the next day. It's actually going to click on all that, fill those fills in for you, and start downloading that data. If I were to do this to ES and leave that on 30 seconds, there is no way that it's going to download ES data in 30 seconds. It's, there's just too much liquidity too much going on for level 2 data to be downloaded that quick. Now I'm running kind of short here. I got 7 seconds, it's still downloading. I got 4, 3, 2, 1, ah, this, uh, I actually kind of wish that would have faulted and I could have showed you what would have happened. That was cutting it super close. The idea that I use for this is I'll set this up in an evening and I'll let this download and then when I get up in the morning all my instruments are all downloaded I can close this down and I'm done and I've got to do it one time. Now you can real quick if you see yourself getting close you can real quick come up here before this time expires do not be doing this when this expires because you'll interrupt the whole process. So if I come up here and now if I type in 20 and I'm not hitting enter or anything, I just typed in 20, I'm kind of hoping that this faults out so that we can show you an error. You notice it's still downloading. Two, one, it's still downloading. I'm going to get an error message. Okay, it was still, now what date was that? Okay, I'm missing 5.3. Now I can see that I'm getting an error and I'm getting an error on 5.3, so I've got to go back and download 5.3 information. Now you don't have to do anything at this point. It's going to clear that screen off and it's going to go to the next date and it's going to download that. The problem is if I, if I was sleeping and I didn't see that happen, I'm going to miss 5-3 because I set my time too quick. Now, we're going to let this play out. This is the last day. When it's done, I get an air log message. It says, NT replay downloader. Some data might not be available. Now, no matter what, you're going to find this because there is no data available for Saturdays and you're normally going to find that in your list. And then I click OK. If you'll notice in the folder that we dragged all of this information to, there is now an NT Replay Downloader log text file. If we double click on that log text file, it comes up and says that there's no L1 data. It should have actually given me an error saying, on the 5.3 that it didn't load that download, that it didn't load that data too. Um, I don't know why it, I don't know why during this demonstration it's not doing that. Normally this will tell me if I had an error on a given date. But 5.4 was 5.4 was a Saturday. Of course there's no L1 data. There's no data for any of our instruments on Saturdays. This will that the log file will tell you. Now, I'm going to go back real quick. I'm going to go back real quick and just download uh, May 3rd since I know that, that I missed out on that date and then we'll continue on with this exercise. Notice 20 seconds is not enough. This is always going to tell you what's going on. If I had that set for 20 and if it was going for the, for the next one, I would have timed out and I would have gotten that error again. Now, this file might be different now. Uh, it's still in there. The, what you're going to find, 
that's a kind of a nuance of this program. If we close this program down, close NT, open NT, open this program back up, the next time we run it, whatever happens the next time will overwrite the data in this file. It won't just accumulate on top of each other. I just thought I'd let you know that. Now, let's just say that I'm doing this on the weekend. I'm doing it on a Friday night. I'm doing it whenever. You, you probably need to go back and test each of your instruments for a week to see what the longest amount of time is down here that it's taking to download that data. Then you want to set that time period here. Normally, if I set that to 60, except for ES, I'm good for any of the instruments that I look at. Now, if I want to download more than one instrument, I can click on 6E. I can hold my Control Shift key down and click CL. I can keep that control down and click ES. Keep the control down and select whatever I want to download. I come back and I select, I started on the 27th, so I want to start on the 28th. And I want to, let's just say that I do that this coming weekend. And I want to download through June 1st. So I set this up at night. I set this to 60. Hell, I might even set it to 90 to make sure that I'm not going to have any problems at all. Select the instruments I want. Select download. And she'll just go away. She'll just start with 6E. She'll download all those days. Then she'll run over to the next instrument, download all those days. The next instrument, download all those days. The next morning I get up, I've got replay data for the whole amount of time that I've selected. It's not the best solution. You can't be doing anything on your computer while this is running. You have to wait X number of seconds between and even if DX only takes 30 seconds, if 6E takes 60, you can't, I mean, unless you want to manually sit here and watch this, you, you pretty much have to set your seconds to the greatest amount of whatever your instruments are and let it run and let it eat. No matter what the drawbacks of this thing are, for me, this is a ton better to grab that month's worth of data over a given night, not doing anything but setting this up and clicking, rather than going through the process that NT makes me go through. Now, is there any other little nuances to this? Um, are there any questions? I see a yuck there, Jerry, but um, it it is a it is a, a cumbersome process. And the thing of it is, is if you do it before you go to bed one night, it'll be done the next morning. If you want to play in, let's just say you wanted to play in replay tonight, uh, you know, no matter what, whether you use this program or you went through this way, you can see that it's still going to take 30 seconds to 90 seconds to download each and every given day. So if you want 30 days worth of data, it's still going to take you 30 minutes to an hour regardless. You're going to want to download Okay, when you're using replay, I'm going to stop this. We're going to close. Well, first of all, is there any questions in reference to the program? Oh, yeah. The end, I, I mean, I can't believe that, that people are, that, that anybody could actually go through the time and the effort to to make market replay useful when you can only download one day at a time. That's probably why a lot of people don't use it, but if you're, if you're still 
if you're still learning your methodology, if you're still developing your plan, if you're still not successful, you should be spending more time in market replay if you're trading sim. You should be trading more you should be spending more time in market replay than you are with looking at real life data. You can put market replay on two and three X and watch the market. You can go through, you know, I don't suggest that you sim trade that way in market replay because it's not a an accurate representation of what you're going to experience during the day. If you stick market replay on 5X and you go trading it, it is super easier, much easier to trade at 5X than it is in real time because the market moves your way or, or, or against you. It does it so quickly that that the emotional aspect that that is involved in this doesn't kick in. If all of a sudden you got it on 5 or 10x and you get into a position and the market runs away and you're like, yeah, this is nice. Why can't I do this for real? Well, because in real life, the market's sitting there and going against you and going for you and going against you and it's giving you time to think and it's giving you time for your emotions to build up and doubt yourself. So if you're going to practice in market replay, 2x max if you if you want any type of, of uh, real time experience. And I, I really suggest that... Um, really suggest you keep it at 1x during hours like the opening or the closing or whatever hours you prefer. You want to keep it as real as possible. You, you want to trade in SIM or market replay like it's real money. You want those emotions to be there. You don't want to play it like a video game or you might as well not use it at all. Um, any questions in reference to this? Did everybody get the file downloaded? Did everybody get it to install? Did anybody have any problems from that standpoint? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'm going to go ahead and close. Well, I'll just move this out of the way because I've got to come back to it. So I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to go File, Connect, Market Replay. Now, my experience is I never, ever, ever want to use my trading templates in market replay. Now, you ask why. Well, because my trading templates have my charts ending at a certain date. Now, in market replay, when I start market replay on this date and I stop it, somehow or another, I tend to find that my trading templates get screwed up. I tend to find that I can't reliably use a template at all. Kind of sucks. Um, one way you might get around it is let's just say that we create a new chart. And um, in order to do this, I need to come to 427. Let's just come over here to, I don't know, 42. Now I'm going to say new chart. I'm going to open up a 6E chart, five minutes. I'll just put it on default 24-7 and I'm going to load 10 days. Now, in market replay, I'm loading 10 days back. If I were to, if instead of dragging the scroll bar, I were to say 4-1, and now I'm now in market replay, I've only loaded from April 1st through the end, and I were to go back and I were to load a chart, it's possible for four two, and I want to load ten days of data back. It's possible I can't load that data because I don't have it here in on my market replay. I suggest starting market replay at a given date. 
using the scroll bar to make sure that the data is being loaded and was seen to a given date and then opening up a chart. Should have 10 days worth of data. Just set that on default 24-7. And there's my data. Now at this point, I can add whatever indicators I want. I can do whatever I want and I'm good to go. Now you might, in different experiences, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You might create a few charts right here for this given date. You might be able to save that template, close Ninja down, bring replay back up, go back to that same date and open up that template. It might work for you, but it might not. I haven't had real good experience with using chart templates or workspaces in market replay. I advise you not to use a trading workspace in market replay if you want that trading workspace the next day. It might work for you, but the one day it doesn't, and you open your charts up in the morning and your workspace is all screwed up, that's the day you're going you're gonna to regret that you did. Just create a replay workspace. The mirror, it, it, and that, Jerry, that might work for you. See, a lot of it depends. Um, it will work for you if you're going back to the same instrument and you're going back to the same time period. That might work for you. If, if you're going to a given day within that same instrument, it might work for you. You can try it. If it works for you, great. Do that. If it doesn't work for you, I'm just telling you that you're going to have to open market replay in a blank workspace, open your charts up, populate them how you want to see them, and work with them like that. It's a pain, but it can't take you shouldn't be using that many indicators on your charts that is going to take you that long to set up a workspace for a given instrument or even for a couple. I don't know that you're going to, you know, I, I'm not, sh I am not sure, and, and I don't, but I'm not sure you're going to want to create a workspace with uh, well, maybe you can with daily, 240-minute, you know, 60-minute, 30-minute tick charts. Um, just remember that when you have all that data loaded and then you start populating them with indicators, especially if those indicators are um, calculate on close false, that you're calculating a that this is – that not only are you running market replay and Ninja's got to calculate all of the bars and all of the ticks, but now it's got to do all that other calculation for everything else you've loaded on your chart, plus all the other six or eight charts that you've got going on. If you've got that on four or five X and you see your charts lock up, well, that's why. I personally, when I'm when I've set, and again, this is just me personally. This probably works if you have one chart and you don't have a lot of indicators and stuff. You can move your scroll bar, and it'll take you to wherever you want to go. If you start putting three or four or five or six charts on this screen, and you start populating each one of those charts with about six indicators, I'm gonna tell you that when you go like this. You might get your charts to reload, and you might not. So pick a date, whatever date that you don't know what happened in the market. If you know what happened on the date you used market replay, you're fooling yourself. Pick a date, whatever date. Start on a Monday, okay, and do all of Monday. 
then at the end of the session, when the session's closed at night, don't be trading. Do not be trading in or playing sim or whatever in a time period that you're not going to be sitting in front of your computer trading in real time. If you're not going to trade during that period of time with your real live money, don't play in market replay. Now, I'm at the end of the day, so I want to go to the next day. I do not drag this forward. I will crank this up to 500, and I will let it go to the next morning, just the way I do it. Now, you're not, I think you're, well, well before we do that, before I go messing, you got to be very careful with how you mess. Um, well, this is 24-7. So what is 315? Is that a uh, March 15th? Oh, crap. March 15th is a Friday, so let's just say we go to the 17th real quick. If it's Friday, Saturday, this would be Sunday. We'll go to 19th. Okay, this is during the day. We're going to load this up, and this is going to play along. Now, if we were at if we were at 6:18 p.m., I would. This works very fine on a single chart, even a couple charts without a lot of indicators. I've had problems with once I load a bunch of indicators and once I load a bunch of cards, charts using that scroll. If, again, if it works for you, great. If it screws up, I told you so. 6 p.m., <clears throat> no. Now, I'm going to let this go at 5x until a time that I am going to think that I'm going to sit and trade. So I, I'll let this sit here. I, I, I'm, again, a, another kind of thing that turns people off to market replay is, is the damn problems that you have with it and the nuances. And I understand all that. It's a wonderful tool, but it does have its problems. I've got to sit here and wait. Now, this is 500x, so every second is taking 500 seconds. So that's about 10 minutes, you know. It's going to take me, what, three minutes to get from, five, you know, five minutes tops to get from 7 p.m. last night to 7 a.m. this morning. You know, this is all good, and you can say, oh, well, watch this. If this is evening hours and you don't trade in the evening and you're not used to the market action because of the, the low liquidity, don't even bother looking at this, people. Now, if you come and sit down in your charts at 6 a.m., now you can start looking at what's going on. But again, if I'm going to, you know, I'm going to crank this up for just a minute. We're going to go to a little later time. We're going to let this come out to, you know, close to the open, maybe 7. We'll go past 7.30 news. What are we on? Uh, 6E. So this actually opens. It. This is actually already open. Okay. So we're right past the open. Now we've got to say we're at a five-minute chart. We've got decisions that we've got to make. No trade, a good trade, where we might trade, blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to tell you that if you crank this up to 10 and you start playing and trading or you crank it up even higher than that and say, okay, I'm going to go long and my stop's underneath here and, and my target's up here, that you're at 10x, you're going through a minute every six seconds and you're not feeling even if you wanted to you're not feeling the emotions and the psychology that goes along with all of a sudden this happening in about 20 seconds where in real life this just took five minutes and now all of a sudden you got this bar coming down and uh, I, you know 
just realize that 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 is a situation and that by the faster you crank that up the the less if you let you know if when I trade sim and I trade market replay I have as much emotions as I do in real life because to me I don't want to reset my account I, I'm actually counting on building that confidence and if I can't have the confidence and do what I would do for real here I'll never be able to go take it to, to real life. But I see others that, you know, want to reset their SIM account every other day or play in market replay and say, ah, well, you know, it don't matter that I just lost 10. You didn't help yourself. You didn't learn anything. The, the idea behind this is to learn, not to play. Um, I don't know that there's really anything else I have to add. I just wanted to, I, I had a couple people ask me about market replay and how I was getting my data and I wanted to share the program with you that, now I downloaded this off Big Mike's, it's in one of his forums over there, it, it's, it's an old one. I mean, there's been several other that have been released through the forums and I've tried them all and I, I always revert back to this. This is probably one of the first ones that was out there. And, you know, even though it's an auto hotkey, I found this to be extremely dependable. I, I set this thing up at night. In the morning, I'm done. The next couple of days, I can play or do whatever I want. You know, the hardest part is the first time when you have no data at all. Like me, I've got data from January 1st through April 27th. So I don't care how long it takes me to get from the 27th to the day. I already have data to play with. So this Friday, I'll probably do that. Now that we're sitting here and playing with this and I see that, you know, Friday night, Saturday night, whenever I'm not around the computer, whatever, I'll set this up to go download all my data. The next day it'll be there and whenever I want to go play and replay, I go play. Any questions at all? No problem at all, Terry. Market replay can be a pain. I mean, it, it, it's caused me, it, it's just caused me headache after headache after headache at, at some times. I will tell you that I experience much less headaches when I keep my replay data folder when I keep this clean when I, when I don't have a year two years you know six months back um, is probably all you need to keep in this just keep all your other stuff in another folder where you can drag and drop it back and forth and play whatever you want. I've, I've had experienced much less um, headaches limiting this down to about six months and also now limiting the, the instruments. I mean, I've only downloaded it for 6E, CL, the dollar and gold. Um, I'll watch crude and gold during the day. I like the 6E and I watch the dollar for correlations between them. If you're not going to trade the Russell or you're not going to trade silver or you, even though you're there in your instrument manager, don't download everything in your instrument manager that you're not going to trade. If you're gonna not going to trade it for real life, for real money in real life, don't download the data and play. Uh, Marius, I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know. Uh, Marius was asking if it downloads continuous contracts. Um, the uh, the star star or the number sign number sign contracts. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. It might, but that data. There's been discussions of that on Big Mike too. Um, Bat Tales is God. He is just a wealth of information over there. 
there was some discussions on that and in the data being slightly different. Now, that's all I have to hear is the data being slightly different, even if it's majorly different one day and slightly different another. If it's not the exact data that I would see on that given day to trade, then I personally don't want to use it. I'm kind of hoping that when I download this stuff, and this is all free, when you do, you don't even you don't have to have a license key for Ninja, you don't have to have a broker account. You can do this on a on a demo ver or not a demo, but a whatever they call their free version of Ninja. The, the the market replay data is downloadable for you know I don't even know how many instruments and. I've gone as far as six, nine, twelve months back, so it's all there. Would there be any other questions? I'm going to go ahead and stop my recording right now, and, um, and we can have whatever discussion you'd like.